The Galactic Council stared in absolute finger amazement as human diplomat Chris Johnson plunged a jagged crystal straight into his own thigh, orange blood gushing everywhere. And yet he didn't even flinch or cry out, his eyes blazing with a singular determination that would shake the foundations of the universe itself. Chris glared around the Grand Council Chamber at the representatives of a hundred alien species, all of whom regarded this lone human suspiciously. It was the year 2257, and humanity had finally been invited to this galactic governing body after centuries of rapid advancement and expansion. But now the Council was deeply divided in the face of a terrifying threat, the brutal Zorgons and their campaign of conquest and enslavement across the stars. As the alien diplomats bickered and argued, Chris gritted his teeth against the pain, knowing that he had to make them understand. Because if humanity failed here, today, then Earth would burn, its people slaughtered or subjugated, all because these fools could not see past their own petty differences. The fate of the human race hung in the balance, and by blood and fury, Chris would make sure these smug alien bastards finally saw the true power of the human spirit unleashed. He yanked the gore-slicked crystal out of his flesh and slammed it on the council table as he rose to speak. Chris yanked the blood-slicked crystal shard from his thigh, slamming it on the council table as he stood, his piercing gaze sweeping over the assembled dignitaries. Councillors, if I may? Corvus narrowed his reptilian eyes, clearly taken aback by the human's brash display. After a tense pause, he waved a clawed hand. The Council recognizes the human delegate. Speak. Thank you, Councillor Corvus. Chris straightened his shoulders, his voice strong and clear despite the throbbing pain in his leg. I understand your concerns about the Zorgan threat. Truly I do. But what you may not realize is that humanity has already faced them in battle. Surprised murmurs rippled through the chamber. Chris raised his voice to be heard over them. Five years ago, the Zorgons attacked our colony on Arcadia without warning or provocation. Over ten thousand innocent men, women and children were slaughtered before we even knew what was happening. He paused, letting the weight of those numbers sink in. We of the United Earth Federation could not let such an atrocity go unanswered, and so we sent one of our best, Captain Marcus Reeves, on a covert mission deep into Zorgon space to learn more about our enemy. Chris tapped a command into the hollow projector embedded in the table. The ghostly blue image of a grizzled, battle-scarred human soldier in UEF blacks shimmered to life above them. At great personal risk, the captain infiltrated a key Zorgon military installation. The hologram shifted, displaying schematics of angular, wicked-looking ships and strange, deadly weapons. There, he recovered crucial intelligence on their ships, their weapons. Intelligence that has allowed us to develop specifically tailored countermeasures and advanced weaponry of our own to defeat them. The human delegate leaned forward, his blood-streaked hands gripping the edge of the table. I come to you today offering to share this technology, this vital edge, with all of you. In exchange, I ask only that you stand with us, in formal alliance, to face this threat together. For if we do not hang together, we shall surely hang separately. Some councillors looked intrigued, others openly sceptical. Corvus spoke up, his tone dripping condescension. You speak of countermeasures and advanced weapons, yet you offer no proof beyond your words. Why should this council put its faith in untested human military technology? Chris smiled grimly, expecting this response. A fair question, Councillor. If you'll permit a demonstration, I believe we can lay your doubts to rest. I propose a simulated battle, your most advanced warships against a UEF battle fleet. Let our actions speak for us where words cannot. The chamber erupted in a cacophony of arguments and objections. Finally, Corvus raised a hand, his expression unreadable. It seems you have roused the Council's curiosity, if nothing else. Very well, human. We will grant your request for this demonstration, but know that we will be watching most carefully, most carefully indeed. The designated sector of space was abuzz with activity as the UEF fleet took up positions opposite the coalition of Council ships. The USS Prometheus, sleek and powerful, was flanked by four interceptor frigates and two harbinger destroyers. 
On the other side, the Council had assembled an impressive array of vessels, a Ferengi marauder, an Arcturian dreadnought, a pair of Zephyrian cruisers. In the observation lounge of the Council's flagship, the assembled dignitaries watched the proceedings with a mix of curiosity and scepticism. Those human ships are so small, sniffed the Ferengi ambassador. Surely they don't expect to challenge us with those toy boats. Corvus said nothing, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen. The human Chris had been so confident, so sure of his fleet's capabilities. But looking at those tiny, primitive-looking ships, Corvus found that confidence hard to swallow. As if on cue, the human fleet began to move. The interceptor frigates darted forward, their hulls shimmering as their stealth systems engaged. In seconds, they vanished from the Council's sensors, eliciting gasps of surprise. Impossible, muttered the Arcturian Admiral. No ship that small has cloaking capability. It must be a trick. But it was no trick. The interceptors reappeared an instant later, behind the Council's battle line. Before the stunned aliens could react, the frigates opened fire, their weapons slicing through shields and armor like a hot knife through butter. The Harbinger destroyers were next to showcase their worth. Plasma cannons emerged from their hulls, glowing with barely restrained power. A heartbeat later, they discharged, sending searing bolts of energy streaking towards the Council ships. The Zephyrian shields flared, buckled, and gave way under the onslaught, leaving the cruisers vulnerable. But it was the Prometheus that truly stole the show. The mighty human flagship seemed to split apart, revealing a cavernous hangar bay within. From that bay poured forth a swarm of fighter drones, each no larger than a shuttle. Moving with impossible speed and coordination, the drones engulfed the Council fleet, picking apart their defences with pinpoint strikes. In the observation lounge, the Council members could only stare in mute shock as their ships fell one by one. The advanced weaponry Chris had spoken of was no mere boast, it seemed. In a matter of minutes, the mock battle was over, and the humans had won in a rout. As the destroyed Council ships limped away, Corvus turned to his fellow councillors, his expression grim. It appears we have gravely underestimated our new allies. The humans are far more formidable than we realised. Chris allowed himself a small smile of satisfaction. The demonstration had gone even better than he dared hope. Surely now the Council would have no choice but to... His thoughts were interrupted by a chime from his communicator, a message from Captain Reeves. Chris's blood ran cold as he read the terse, urgent text. The Zorgans had attacked the colony on New Eden. Fifty thousand lives hung in the balance. There was no time to lose. He turned to Corvus, his voice tight with barely controlled urgency. Counselor, I have just received grave news. The Zorgans have launched an attack on one of our colonies. Thousands of innocent lives are at risk. I must request an emergency session of the Council immediately. To his surprise, Corvus did not hesitate. The demonstration had clearly made an impact. Of course, Delegate Chris, the Council will convene at once to hear your proposal. If there is a way we can aid your people, we will do so. As Chris followed Corvus out of the observation lounge, he could only pray they would not be too late. The fate of New Eden and perhaps all of humanity now rested in the hands of this council, and in his own. Chris stormed into the council chamber, his face tight with urgency. Councillors, I have grave news. The Zorgans have launched a full-scale invasion of our colony on New Eden. Tens of thousands of lives are at stake. He pulled up a holographic display of the besieged planet, its surface swarming with Zorgon ships and ground forces. The Zorgon's aggression against humanity is a clear sign of their intention to dominate the entire galaxy. If we do not stop them here, they will only grow bolder and more powerful with each conquest. Chris met the eyes of each counselor in turn, his voice ringing with conviction. I urge you to join forces with the United Earth Federation to repel this attack. Together, we can send a message that the free peoples of this galaxy will not stand idly by in the face of tyranny. The council erupted into a cacophony of debate. Some, like Corvus, spoke in favor of an alliance. The humans have proven their strength and resolve. It is in all our interests to combine our might against this common foe. 
but others, like the Ferengi ambassador, were more hesitant. And risk drawing the Zorgon's ire upon ourselves? I think not. Better to let the humans fight their own battles. As the arguments grew more heated, Zelos, the Zephyrian counselor, raised his hand for silence. Perhaps there is a middle ground. The council could provide logistical and intelligence support to the UEF without directly engaging the Zorgans ourselves, at least until the immediate threat to New Eden is neutralized. Chris gritted his teeth, knowing that every second of delay cost human lives, but he also knew that this was likely the best offer he would get. Very well. The UEF accepts the council's proposal. With a curt nod to the councillors, Chris strode from the chamber, already activating his comm link. Captain Reeves, the council has agreed to provide support. What's your status? Reeves' voice crackled over the link, strained but determined. We've just arrived at New Eden. The situation is dire, Chris. The Zorgans have already established a beachhead and are pushing towards the main settlement. Understood. Reinforcements are on their way. Do whatever you have to do to hold the line. As the link disconnected, Chris clenched his fists, silently praying that they would not be too late. On the surface of New Eden, all was chaos and fire. Zorgon dropships disgorged streams of armoured soldiers, their weapons spitting searing bolts of plasma into the beleaguered UEF defences. In orbit above, the USS Prometheus shuddered as another salvo of Zorgan fire slammed into its shields. On the bridge, Captain Reeves gripped the arms of his command chair, his face grim. Status report. Shields at 60%, sir. The Zorgan fleet is pressing their attack. Reeves nodded sharply. Unleash the drone swarms and order the interceptors to target those troop transports. We need to cut off their reinforcements. As the crew rushed to comply, Reeves turned his gaze to the tactical display, watching the tide of red icons representing the Zorgon forces. They were outnumbered and outgunned, but he would be damned if he let this colony fall. All ships engage at will. Let's show these bastards what humans are made of. With a roar of engines and a blaze of weapons fire, the UEF fleet surged forward to meet the enemy head-on. On the planet below, UEF marines dug in around the perimeter of the main settlement, pouring fire into the advancing Zorgans. Overhead, the sky was alight with the criss-crossing beams of ship-to-ship -ship combat and the explosions of dying vessels. It was a scene straight out of hell, but for the men and women of the UEF, it was a hell they knew all too well. They had been forged in the crucible of war, tempered by loss and sacrifice, and they would not yield not so long as a single human heart still beat. As the battle raged on, Chris could only watch from the council chambers, his heart in his throat. The fate of New Eden, and perhaps all of humanity, hung in the balance. All he could do now was trust in the skill and courage of his people, and pray that it would be enough. Chris paced the council chamber, his mind racing as he tried to focus on the ongoing battle reports, streaming in from New Eden. The UEF fleet was holding the line, but only just. The Zorgons were relentless, throwing wave after wave of ships and soldiers at the beleaguered colony. They needed a miracle, and fast. Suddenly his communicator chimed with an urgent message from UEF intelligence. Chris's blood ran cold as he read the contents. The Zorgons had a new weapon, something called the Ragnarok. Intel was sketchy, but one thing was clear. This thing was capable of wiping out entire planets in a single shot. And it was on its way to New Eden right now. Chris didn't hesitate. He opened a secure channel to the Prometheus. Captain Reeves, we have a situation. The Zorgons have a planet killer, and they're bringing it to the party. Reeves's face was grim on the viewscreen. Understood. Send me the intel. I'll handle it. To the data pack it only took a second to transmit... But to Chris it felt like an eternity. Every moment they delayed, the Ragnarok drew closer to New Eden. And if it got there, Chris didn't even want to think about the consequences. I've got it, Reeves said, his eyes quickly scanning the information. Looks like this thing is being transported on a heavily guarded flagship. We'll need to take that out first. Do whatever you have to do, Marcus, Chris said. 
The Council is behind us now, but New Eden is just the beginning. If the Zorgons have more weapons like this... They won't get the chance to use them, Reeves promised. I'll put together a strike team, infiltrate that flagship, and blow the Ragnarok to hell. The screen went dark as Reeves signed off, no doubt already assembling his team and prepping for the mission. Chris could only pray they would succeed. The fate of New Eden, and perhaps the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. The strike on the Zorgon flagship was quick, brutal, and bloody. Reeves and his hand-picked team of UEF commandos managed to slip aboard the massive vessel undetected, thanks in no small part to the chaos of the ongoing space battle raging around them. But stealth only got them so far. As soon as they neared the Ragnarok's holding bay, all hell broke loose. Zorgon guards swarmed from every direction, plasma fire filling the corridors. Reeves and his soldiers fought like demons, pushing forward inch by blood-soaked inch. They paid a heavy price for every step. One by one the commandos fell, until only Reeves and a handful of others remained. But they had reached their goal. The Ragnarok loomed before them, a monstrous cannon that dwarfed any weapon Reeves had ever seen. There was no time to plant a complex charge. Reeves was bleeding from a dozen wounds, and he knew he didn't have long. With the last of his strength, he primed a simple explosive pack and slapped it onto the Ragnarok's main power conduit. All units fall back to the extraction point, he ordered over the comm, his voice ragged with pain. I'll finish this. The surviving commandos protested, but Reeves silenced them with a look. They knew as well as he did that this was a one-way trip. With a final nod of respect, they retreated, fighting their way back to the waiting dropship. Alone now, Reeves slumped against the Ragnarok, his vision dimming. With a final effort, he lifted his detonator and smiled. Burn in hell, you bastards! And then he pressed the button. The explosion was incredible, a searing blast of light and heat that consumed the flagship from the inside out. The Ragnarok vanished in the inferno, reduced to nothing more than molten slag, and with it went the Zorgon's best hope for victory. The loss of their planet killer threw the Zorgon fleet into disarray. Suddenly faced with a UEF emboldened by this stunning blow and bolstered by the additional ships and weapons provided by the Council, the Zorgon lines crumbled. One by one their ships fell until those that remained had no choice but to flee. New Eden was saved, but the cost had been high. In the aftermath of the battle, Chris once again stood before the Galactic Council, his heart heavy with both triumph and grief. Today we have shown the Zorgans and any who would threaten the peace of this galaxy that we will not cower in fear, he declared. Captain Marcus Reeves and all the brave soldiers who gave their lives at New Eden have proven that when we stand together there is no foe we cannot overcome. The council chambers erupted into applause, Corvus and Zalos leading the ovation. For the first time Chris saw the assembled leaders not as tentative allies, but as true friends, united by the bonds of shared sacrifice. The Zorgons thought us weak, fractured, easily divided, Chris continued. They were wrong, and we will continue to prove them wrong as many times as it takes, until the shadow of their tyranny has been banished from the stars forever. More applause, and this time Chris felt the weight of responsibility settling on his shoulders. The battle was over, but the war had only just begun. There would be more New Edens, more Ragnaroks, more brave soldiers called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice. But as he looked out at the determined faces of the Council, Chris felt a spark of hope amid the sorrow and weariness. Together, they would weather the coming storm. Together, they would build a galaxy where peace was more than just a dream. It wouldn't be easy but nothing worth fighting forever was. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.